in the midst of a lot of the gloomy news that we've been hearing for the past couple weeks, I just want to hit y'all with some great news for actually. First of all, good morning to everybody. King Gary from Off The Cuff Radio. I want to thank everybody that tuned in to the seven-year anniversary of the show. I want to send a big shout-out to Cocaine, Silky Fine, Doodlebug, CMG for the Conscious Daughters, Young Bleed, Smith & Wesson. They sent me some love. My man Big Twins from the Infamous Mob, uh, Black Poet, Comet. A lot of people send us love, man. Uh, my homegirl, Tierra, and uh, Megan Martinez, Miss, Miss Chinchilla, Ila the Sandman. A lot of y'all, man. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's more, but you know how it is with the morning, man. The morning gets to you. So, with this whole thing here, I was looking at the Wu-Tang Season 2. Uh, series and I gotta take back a lot of what I said about the dude that played RZA he really stepped his game up this time around Ashton Sanders I gotta take back what I said about him it seems like he's really nailing the RZA character now he's really more focused this time around he's growing into that I'm starting to see he changed the voice around. The voice is a bit deeper. He's starting to get more of Larissa's body language. It's he's really coming to his own about that. And I'm starting you start to really learn more about the characters. You start to see the crazy stories that happen before they even put out their first record. I mean, from Ghost Getting Shot and Raekwon. Meeting Eric Sermon in the studio, which is dope. That's all I'm going to give y'all right there. That's two of the things that I thought that was very interesting. The rest y'all got to see for yourselves. But we definitely need this right now based off the gloomy news that we've been getting from the past two, three months. So it's great to see the clan still back together doing their thing and... Hopefully, not only some good music will come out of there, but I heard that Raekwon is dropping Cuba Links 3 soon. He just dropped his um, autobiography, so we're going to see about that. I don't know if we're going to get Supreme Clientele 2, but nevertheless, let's just be thankful that Wu-Tang is still here and that this TV show is showcasing their legacy in a positive form. And I'm also going to be uploading... An old interview that I did with uh, Don, Pacino, Don Pacino, the PR terrorist, that I did years ago. Now, before y'all listen, I'm going to let y'all know how this interview went. I was a big green. I was a big green, and he was a little bit late. So at that time, when I was doing interviews, I was, I was still a big green. I wasn't really doing interviews by myself. And I was a little bit unprepared with the, with the structure. I was a little bit unprepared with the structure because I was expecting him to call in a bit like on time, but he called in like 30 minutes later. So we had to keep the show going in the meantime, and I didn't know if he was going to call or not. So he called up there, and I didn't really structure the show real well. I thought it was pretty good for what it was. Dom, Even Dom told me, he said the question was a little bit unorganized, but... You did, you did a great job, and you will be great, man. And that gave me motivation right there. That gave me motivation right there. He told me, you gonna, you got this, man. And this was one of my first interviews, interviewing a bigger artist. So big shout-out to uh, PR Terrace for, you know, giving us that look. This interview, keep in mind, was from 2016. So I'm seasoned now. I'm seasoned now. So I hope y'all enjoy it. Thank you everybody for supporting us. Check out us tonight. We got my man Pace One from the Outsiders in the build in the building. Along with young Alimony. So it's gonna be a dope show, man. We're gonna keep pushing this thing. Subscribe to us, subscribe to Screwball Radio. Support the real, y'all. Holla.